Welcome back to Honest News. Not everything today that is called Christian or Christianity is Christian. Not every plant has been planted by God. I may know that. And how many know that the enemy in this hour is planting tares? In this message, we're going to be looking at the wheat and the tares, but we're going to share with you more so the timing and where the tares are being sown. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13 is where we're going to begin our lesson this morning. We'll be right back after this. Matthew, the 15th chapter, and beginning with verse 13. And this is Jesus speaking. But he answered and he said, uh, said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Are you listening? Let them alone. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. What does Jesus say to do with the tares? Leave them alone. Amen? Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. Where were they sown? They were sown among the wheat, folks. And he went his way. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the divine truth of your word. We thank you, God, for helping us to deliver, Lord, your word in this hour. We ask that you help us to be faithful, Lord, in delivering this message today. We ask that you bless and that you anoint. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The enemy is the one that sowed the tares. And he sowed them among the wheat. How many know there's a difference between wheat and barley? Exodus chapter 9, verse 31. It says, at the time when God's judgment was coming upon Egypt, the flax and the barley were not smitten. Why weren't the flax and the barley smitten? For the barley was in the ear, and the, or excuse me, why was it that the wheat wasn't smitten? Excuse me. For the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten. For they were not, what? 
they were not grown up. You see, there's a difference in the timing of the barley and the wheat. The barley harvest comes before the wheat harvest. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 13. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. So when is the timing, folks? When the tares are going to be sown. They're being sown right now because the tares are being sown among the wheat. It's not that the wheat has grown up or as it's fully developed. It's that the wheat has already been sown. There are many right now in the kingdom that are saved. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? In order to be uh, part of the barley harvest, you have to be at least filled with the Holy Spirit. And how many know there's also the first of the first fruits coming out of the barley? It's not enough just to be filled with the Holy Spirit to be in the bride. So if the tares are being sown among the wheat, we must understand that this is a harvest that's going to take place after the bride is taken and after the church is caught up in the middle of the air. And when are the tares going to come to fruition? What did Jesus say? He said, let them grow together. So all that you're seeing today with the tares, all these leaders, blind leaders today, that are leading folks into a ditch, which really is hell, all these false teachers today, The wheat are the ones that are being affected, and even they can be choked by the tares, the blind leaders. In all of this, what does the Lord tell you and I to do? Does he say to go into the churches and uh, lift up our voices like a trumpet and warn them? No. He tells you and I to leave him alone. Amen? It's in God's hands. It's not up to you and I to try to help them. Leave them alone. The Lord says, let them grow together. And in the time of the harvest, God will deal with it. He will send forth the reapers. Amen? And he will, the scripture says he's going to bundle the tares, the blind leaders, and those that are affected by the blind leaders. He's going to bind them, bundle them all up and get ready to throw them in the fire. Are you listening? Hellfire. Maybe you know somebody right now that's a wheat. They don't believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit. They're saved. Listen to me, folks. The difference between the wheat and the barley is that the outer shell of the wheat is much more thicker or it's more hard, and it has to receive a beating. Are you listening? The barley doesn't require that beating. It's very easy to get the shell, the outer shell, off of the barley, and usually it just takes the winnowing. Just the wind blowing through is enough to get that chaff off of the, off the barley. But the, but the wheat requires an extra beating. How many know great persecution is coming to the church? And... I don't believe that the wheat is only going to have to endure being beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ, but they're going to experience some beating. There's going to be persecution. Are you listening to this preacher? 
Great persecution is coming. Amen? Even in America, it's coming. Great persecution. And the church is going to be spared much. They're going to flee from this persecution, and God has a place prepared for them. But once the church is taken up in the middle of the air, folks, it's going to get pretty ugly on this earth. And we see that the wheat is not going to make it out of this world except with a great beating. And it's going to take even a beheading to be removed from the earth. Take a look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 here. The foolish virgins in this parable are the same as the wheat. How many know that? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, they're not, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. But the wise, not only are they filled with the Holy Spirit, it says they took oil not only in their vessels, they're not only filled with the Spirit, but they took oil with them, extra oil. Amen? And it was while the bridegroom tarried, what did they do? They all slumbered and slept both the wise and the foolish. That represents the church as a whole, and it represents the, uh, the foolish virgins, represent the wheat that are going to be left behind even after the church is caught up. Now the scripture says, while men slept, hello, While men slept. Isn't that what it says? But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. While the wise and the foolish virgins sleep, the enemy, Satan, he came and sowed tares among the wheat. Not among the barley. How many know that tares are not being sown among the barley? Amen. You you got to understand, God loves his people. He's very jealous over his people. But when you have those today that are saved, they're babes, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're carnal. The scripture says, remember, Paul said that you're yet carnal. You speak as men. There's a lot of carnal Christians today that are not spiritual, that don't understand spiritual things, that are gathering in these places where the tares have been sown. A lot of these leaders today are working with the Vatican. They're working with the Pope. How many know that? Nick Hall is becoming renowned right now, and they're saying he's the next Billy Graham. He's continuing the Asbury revival over this right now, today, on Sunday, at a, I think it's called the Roop, R-U-P-P, uh, arena, where 20,000 people can be seated. He's a blind leader. He's a tear. He's working with the Pope. Are you listening? He wants to bring together all denominations, including the LGBT. And if you look at his website, he uses the colors that represent the queers. Are you listening? You can even see a queer spirit on him at times because he's opening himself up to those things. Listen to me, folks. I'm not saying he's possessed with it. He's married. He's got children. What I'm saying to you is you get close to that spirit, it's not long that it'll be, it'll be on you. Amen? 
It'll begin to change your mannerisms. That is a wicked spirit. But let me tell you something, folks. Listen. That outer shell that's on the wheat that's very hard to to break off of the grain. That represents the stubbornness of the flesh. The more stubborn you are, folks, the more chance of you being left behind. This is no time to be stubborn. No time to be fighting against the truth, fighting against the word. If anything, folks, you want to get every bit of stubbornness out of you. You want to let the Lord help you. If there's any stubbornness in you, it can lead to you being left behind. What does the scripture say about stubbornness? It's idolatry. Rebellions of the sin of witchcraft. But stubbornness is idolatry. Idolaters aren't going to heaven. I may know that. You may think that you're just being stubborn. No, God says it's idolatry. So all these people today that call themselves Christian, they've been born again, they're saved, but they're not spiritual and they're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and they are carnal. They, they've got a stubbornness about them. Are you listening? They're very stubborn. You and I, brothers and sisters, we are told from Jesus, we are commanded by the Lord, leave them alone. Right? Let them grow together. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Well, Brother Joseph, I think we should pray for them. Did Jesus say pray for them? Did he? He said, leave them alone. Amen? You should be praying for those that the Holy Spirit puts on your heart to pray for. You should be led of the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be just randomly praying that God will bring them out of the charismatic movement or bring them out of the Catholic Church. No, the Bible says leave them alone. Amen? God would not even allow Jeremiah to weep. I believe it was Jeremiah. Well, one of the prophets, I can't remember now, because Jeremiah did do a lot of weeping, but somebody, one of the prophets, had the desire to weep, and God wouldn't even let them weep. It says it was the desire of their eye was to weep. Are you listening? People, there's times when God will say, leave them alone. That's not easy for us to do. But I believe with all my heart, we are in the hour now where we must leave them alone and we must separate ourselves, come out from among them, be separate. And what we should be doing is making ourselves ready. We should be getting ready. We should not be distracted with what's going on, all this false revival today. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. While others are being distracted, while others are preoccupied, it says she made herself ready. How many in this hour are awake, alert, watching and praying, and making themselves ready? Not very many. But you can be one of those. That's alert, awake, sober, vigilant. That you are not being seduced. That you're not slumbering and going on to sleep. But that you are aroused. You are awakened. You are stirred by the Holy Ghost. Amen. She says, my heart. She said, I sleep, but my heart waketh. I sleep, that's the bride in Song of Solomon. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. Amen. He's trying to wake her up. I may know the Lord is trying to 
keep you and I awake. He's trying to keep us from going to sleep. Slumber is on the way to sleep. They slumbered before they slept. Slumber is when you're giving your eyelids start getting heavy and you're getting ready to go to sleep. Long before the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, but long before the church went to sleep, they began to slumber. That's the state the church is in right now. They're already slumbering. Amen. But let us not sleep as others sleep. Let us be sober. Let us be vigilant. We're supposed to be children of the day, not of the night. They that are in the night, they sleep. Amen. But you and I, we're supposed to be of the day. Praise the Lord. We're supposed to be awake, alert, sober. Don't give sleep to your eyes, people, spiritually. Wake up. Amen. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. God bless you.